Welcome to the Simply Vegan podcast from the team at Vegan Food and Living, the UK's best-selling vegan magazine. Every Tuesday, we taste test the newest vegan products, discuss the latest vegan news and answer your questions on everything from nutrition and supplementation to recipe ideas and dealing with negative backlash. Every Thursday, we speak to some of the leading names in veganism, from doctors and scientists to vegan chefs, celebrities and authors. Head to your platform of choice to like and subscribe and stay up to date with all the latest episodes. You can also listen to us on your smart speaker or on YouTube. And don't forget to leave us a review to help spread the word and help others on their plant-powered journey. Hello and welcome back to the Simply Vegan podcast. We are three quarters of the way through World Vegan Month. For the duration of this month, we have gone twice a week. We still would love to hear from you about whether we should go back to one big fat long episode a week or two <laughs> shorter ones. So don't forget you can email us at simplyvegan at anthem.co.uk and also follow us on Instagram at Simply Vegan Podcast and at Vegan Food and Living. How are you, Molly? Have you had a good week? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Happy to see your face. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've had a good week, actually. Um, my mum and my sister came to visit Bristol over the weekend for a little pre-wedding trip um, for my sister. As I said last week, she's getting married on the 10th of December, your birthday. So it was just really nice to see them. Um, yeah, we just ate loads of food and watched loads of films and drank loads of wine. It was lovely. Oh, that sounds really nice. Do they both live in Wales? Yeah, they both live in Wales, both live in Portalbert. <laughs> I had a very nice weekend, actually. I was lucky enough to go and check out a, it's like a wellness hotel. Mm. Um, it's, it's really quirky and unusual. It's called Birch and yeah. it's sort of just north of London. Um, and it's it's kind of like this old manor house that's been converted into a hotel but like a wellness space and there's like DJs and there's like a TP bar <laughs> um it's it's really hard to describe what it's like the, the the sort of um the lady of the manor that lived there like in the Victorian era used to keep zebras I mean this is not vegan Stop. at all but obviously we're talking about <laughs> a different era she kept zebras and would ride them um <gasps> Yeah, and they would pull her carriage into London. So she'd go off into London um, with these zebras pulling her. I think she was sort of very eccentric. Um, So, yeah, so much history. And it was lovely. We had, like, meditation and then focaccia making class. Oh, yeah, which is, like, naturally vegan. Um, And then, like, this, I think it was, like, five courses um meal in the it's called the zebra riding club the restaurant <laughs> um which was just beautiful I mean the food was just incredible it was like oh uh, was it like a little tasting thing like tasting menu yeah loads of different mm. things I think the main dish was like this sort of baked squash with like crispy fried sage and um I don't even know what else was in there but it was just yeah, <laughs> delicious I've done a lot of eating and then what with oh. all our taste tests as well I'm like blimey I don't I know, I know. I had to do some yoga this morning. I just woke up and I was just like, you need to be active. <laughs> I think when winter comes, it's just so easy, isn't it, to just stick on a furry jumper, furry jumper, a big jumper and um, just get cozy on the sofa. But it felt good. It was good to do a bit of exercise this morning. I recommend it. <laughs> yeah, if you force yourself out of that kind of comfort zone, it does do you good. I, I went, yeah. to a hit, went to a hit class earlier for the first time in months and yeah, I do feel a bit better, um, but I'm still working my way through a lot of cheese and chocolate with the, all these taste <laughs> tests, which we've got coming up. So I'm really excited to start telling everyone about all the things we've been trying in December. Me but, too. But for today, we're going to start off with Cracked. So this is like, it's spelled C-R-A-C-K apostrophe D, isn't it? I got that right. Yeah, I think, I don't know if apostrophe is in there. I think it's just Cracked. Because oh, I was in it? apostrophe in it in it and I don't think it is oh okay cracked so basically <laughs> it's like an egg replacement it's it's about four pounds and you can find it at M&S the vegan for kind supermarket Morrison's and a few other places that are listed on their website it's made from pea protein nutritional yeast black salt if you don't know what that is it's kind of like a eggy salt <laughs> yeah it is it's like sulfuric flavor isn't it yeah it's crazy 
yeah, it is crazy, actually. <laughs> it's such a natural ingredient. <laughs> um, and it's fortified with vitamin B and D. It does contain like thickness and coloring. So it's not like mm. an all natural product. Um, what did you cook with it? We got given two bottles. A little really does go a long way with this. What I noticed, I don't even think I finished one bottle yet. Um, and I have cooked quite a few. I've got a funny story to say because you're just going to laugh. Um, so I have been really craving a tiramisu. Oh, right. Yeah. And I was just like, now is the time. I seen a recipe on their website, actually, correct website, um, for this tiramisu. And I was like, I'm going to do it. Now is the time. I bought all the ingredients. And for the, like, the cream bit, it said to use like soft cheese or cream cheese. Um, so I bought soft cheese, obviously vegan, but it was just like putting dairy lee in the mixture. Oh. So I kind of like did it and I was like, it'd be fine. Surely it'd be fine. This this is just the way that it is. I'll just put this rice and sugar and vanilla in it. It'd be fine. It wasn't fine. <laughs> I <laughs> no. I cut through it. Oh no. It was like eating cheese. Well, it was just cheese and cake. Oh no, that's weird. Oh mate, it was so bad. It was so bad. But I made Yorkshire puddings. Right. And I made a custard yesterday as well to go on my apple, pear, and blackberry crumble. Get you I doing know. all the cooking. I know. I was I was going all out. <laughs> did did the Yorkshire puddings rise? That's what we need to know. <sighs> they rose better than my other ones. Basically, I just have this fear of hot oil. And I just took it out too early and the oil wasn't hot enough. So right. um, I feel like it could have risen better if I left the oil in to be hotter. Yeah. But I've never yeah. been good at making Yorkshire puddings. It's hard to get a rise on them without the egg, isn't it? So mm. this is a good, I mean, I would say that this is a really good product for using in stuff, like you said, yeah. like Yorkshire puddings or... Um, making cakes maybe crepes omelets things like that Mm. um but I wouldn't say it's that great as like like scrambled egg I think you I think I prefer doing that with um tofu myself silken tofu now because my daughter's decided that she much prefers that oh I've not tried it yeah it's just sort of a bit more um wet (laughs) (laughs) I want of a better word it's not as (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know like you know like when you used to eat scrambled egg you'd either have it quite dry and fluffy yeah or you'd have it quite runny mm, like creamy yes yeah, so it's a personal preference thing but she I think with the the the, the block tofu what's it called the firm firm tofu that's it yeah um sometimes yeah if you don't mash it up enough you get sort of like chunks and yeah and, yeah, it's not really quite right. So yeah, she prefers that, which is annoying because I think it's more expensive. <laughs> but so I can tell you, yeah, it is. But anyway, cracked is definitely worth a try. Um, just don't expect to literally, you know, it's not going to be like the, exactly the same as eggs, but it's a no. really useful thing to have in your store cupboard kind of artillery, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> the sponge that I used that for the tiramisu came up so well. It was really oh, good. Did it? Yeah, that was really, really good. So I'd say... Yeah, I'd agree that more baking and stuff is better for Yeah, definitely, which, you know, I don't really do. But perhaps I'll, <laughs> perhaps I'll get my mum a, a bottle of it for Christmas. <laughs> Bake me something now. Yeah. <laughs> um, the other thing we tried this month was um, from Sweet Yourself Vegan, which is kind of a, it's a little company online, isn't it? How did you discover them? Uh, on my, it's basically, long story short, I was writing this cho- uh, chocolate article for the website and um I was just looking for like independent chocolate brands to share to include in the future and I came across sweet yourself I think it's sweet yourself or sweet yourself vegan I think the web address is sweetyourself.co.uk yeah but the company name is sweet yourself vegan I think and I was just amazed by it they're so like the chocolate bars are so over the top um what did we have? We had a Biscoff Crunch, which was like um, a really thick white chocolate bar um, stuffed with Biscoff sauce and then with loads of Biscoff crumbled on top. Um, we actually had these in December. No, when did we have them? October. Um, so we had a Halloween one as well, which was filled with like a raspberry sauce with um, like 
vampire sweets and stuff on top of it. Oh, right. Yeah, I didn't really get that. I just thought it was just sweets. Oh. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. <laughs> I mean, to look at them, you think, oh my gosh, like, you know, you can just imagine a child eating it and kind of yeah. having, a, having a hyper for like three hours afterwards. <laughs> for three and, days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I think because I'm not really, I haven't got a massively sweet tooth. I was thinking, yeah. oh my God. However, one day I cracked open, <laughs> I cracked open the Biscoff one. Jesus, oh, it is lovely. It's so, so good. I thought it was going to be so, so sweet. And it obviously is, but I just couldn't stop eating it. I was just no. kind of like, I had to put it in a corner of the room and I was going over like a little mouse and just having a nibble and then yeah. carrying away. <laughs> And then I had to come back for some more. It was so that's, good. That's exactly what I did. I was like, no, no, Holly, stop, stop, no more. And then I'd be like thinking about it just a little a bit more, just another bite. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm going to get some though for um, like stockings. They're perfect for like gifts and stuff. And they've got some Christmas ones out as well. Now I think they've got a gingerbread one. Um, and then they've cane. got like, candy cane. Yeah, yeah. They've got an Oreo one they, and they've, they also stock like vegan sweets as well. So they're perfect for this time of year. Yeah, they're really nice. They're £4.50 roughly, but the d- different sort of products vary. But the, the bars, the the white chocolate bars we're talking mm. about, £4.50. So yeah, go and check them out, sweetyourself.co.uk. Um, the third taste test for today's episode is Four Sigmatic Mushroom Mix. And this is kind of like sachets of kind of hot chocolate, but with a healthy twist. Yeah. Um, they're available at Holland and Barrett and Planet Organic and they're £12.50 for 10 sachets. So they're not cheap. Um, however, they are packed with loads of goodness, such as I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Reishi. <laughs> uh-huh. I mean, I don't want to say Rishi because that's our chancellor, isn't it? <laughs> 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 so um, this can help um, support your immune system, reduce stress, improve sleep. Um, and it can also, uh, has been taken for high blood pressure and high cholesterol, or obviously I'd recommend consulting a doctor before, you know, using that alone. As a... <laughs> We're not doctors. <laughs> no. Um, but, and then obviously you've got cacao in there, which is great for reducing inflama- inflammation. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So it's like a really nice sort of hug in a mug before bed. And it's got also it's got like cardamom and cinnamon. And I've actually got a cup here in front of me. Which I'm <laughs> yeah, I find them really nice. So flavoursome. Um, definitely like a obviously healthy alternative to hot chocolate. Um, not so heavy either, obviously, because it's just not got all of the crap that's in regular hot chocolate. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love them. Yeah, it's all organic as well. So yeah. Yeah, it's it's hard to judge things when it, they've got this sort of health angle, unless you're going to kind of have them quite regularly and do sort of like mm. tests on yourself or something. But um, good to kind of support a, your healthy vegan diet. Yeah. Um, well, let's get on to the news. Um, Tiger King. Now, I have a confession. When you mentioned about talking about this in the yeah. news section, I've never actually seen it. Yeah. I think you don't need to see it. It's too upsetting to watch. Um, Really? Yeah, it's really... So I watched the first season. I'm going to give you a lowdown. So it came... The first first season came out in lockdown. I think it was like the month of lockdown, maybe the month after. Um, And essentially it just looks at this guy in America called Joe Exotic. And basically he owns this like big cat farm, not farm... um, zoo big cat zoo and it's just like tigers and um cheetahs and loads of like really endangered big cats that are just in these metal cages in the zoo basically like you've got cubs and stuff of people coming and like taking pictures and it's just so exploitative exploitative is that right? yeah it's just so exploitative and it's just a really really hard watch But the second season came out um, this week and that was even harder because it just showed how many of these zoos are actually in America and how people are collecting these like exotic animals just to have and to kind of like 
drive about in and it's just all about money and power and then you're seeing these poor animals being neglected so much and you know they've got no land to roam on they've got they look so um malnourished um yeah it's really really hard to watch but it is this supposed to be an entertainment program that's what I don't understand it's not like an investigative documentary is it so it's kind of it's a weird one and I have issues with Netflix kind of like for showing this because it, they have an angle of dramatizing the storyline but then to me it's just like these animals are involved and you're kind of not giving them the help that they need and P, uh, Peter is like heavily involved in it and um all of the people that own these exotic animals own in speech marks um they hate Peter and they just think that like everyone's just after to shut them down. They don't prioritize the animals at all. And it's so hard to watch. My boyfriend was watching it over the weekend and I just had to turn it off. Oh my God. Yeah. It's hard. And they've gone, they've let them have a, a series too. This is so wrong. Mm, yeah. We need to find a, um, a, a petition. There's, there's usually yeah, a petition definitely. for these things. Yeah. Have a quick Google. It showed like, I obviously didn't watch it all. So I don't really know the outcome of season two, but like, they were obviously trying to shut these places down, but also I can't help but think like, why are you even, you know, giving funding this program? And I don't know, it's a hard one because obviously you're shining light on it, but then you're also making money and, yeah. you know, glorifying this lifestyle. Yeah. In this day and age, really, yeah. it's just got to stop, hasn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, well, some more positive news is that mm. Marco Pierre White, who's a Michelin star chef, isn't he? Yeah, he's like um, iconic. Yeah, he has started using 3D printed steaks, which totally blows mine and Molly's little brains. Because uh. you're like, how does steak come out of a printer? <laughs> but I, it's amazing because he's like really championing it, isn't he? It's so strange to see. I think for ages we've seen like, high-end um, chefs um not ready to like take the step to like vegan meat and stuff and they kind of like dismiss it uh so it's great to see someone as big as Marco Pierre White I th- what did he I think he called it pure genius yeah yeah, yeah. He, he really was some um, sort of really bigging it up and obviously the fact he's using it in his in some of his restaurants I think in um so in a steakhouse like which is just so interesting I know so I think that's really um great and it'd be interesting to see who goes for it I think it's going to be the same price as the steaks so sort of like range the the cow based steaks yeah it's really interesting and then I think there's three other restaurants in London that are um like doing it as well I think it's a place called Burger Bear um I can't remember what the other place is called and then loads of restaurants over Europe as well so it's really taken off fantastic what's it made from then so it's you'll have to give me a minute to explain this so it's made from soy I guess soy and pea protein and essentially what they do is they map the like fat molecules and like cell structures of like cow steak and (laughs) and then using the printer they print it (laughs) I wish I knew. I wish I knew. I wish I knew. So many people have been like, but what is it made of? What is it made of? And it is just normal ingredients. It's just the process of it. Yeah. So it's the same sort of thing you'd find in like a vegan burger or something like that. But it's it's being the texture and the structure. Would would you go for something like that? Or would it be a bit too realistic for you? Mm, I think I'd try it. It looks crazy. I don't know whether you've seen pictures of it, but it just looks like so like fibrous and I think um in the video Marco um described it as like braised beef cheek right yeah try not to get too grossed out yeah I know so quite soft and sort of um like pull apart kind of texture I don't know I I wouldn't not try it, but I don't know if I'd be in it every weekend. I couldn't afford no. to eat it every weekend. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's brilliant for the animals and it's brilliant for the environment. And 100%. It's better for your health. So I think yeah. it's a winner all round, isn't it? Definitely. 
Well, the last news story that we wanted to talk about today is a new study that concluded that a vegan diet lowers the amount of medicines that seniors yeah. are using. And I, I found this um, really stood out for me because I I think we're all living longer, aren't we, us humans, mm-hmm. um, which is obviously good for us, not so good for the, <laughs> the poor planet we're living on. <laughs> um, but we're all, are we actually healthy? Are we just living longer because we're all taking this cocktail of drugs? And yeah. And when you, you know, like when my grandparents got towards the end of their lives, God bless them, they were just amazing people. Mm-hmm. But, you know, they'd have these boxes and the amount of pills, it was one for this and then one to counteract the side effects of this. And it was just crazy. And, you know, I don't think, is that how spend the last few years of our lives just I know it it, there's so much just like reliance on you know medication and stuff and I'm not again we're not doctors so I'm not saying that you know they're not needed and stuff but a lot of the time I think there is a lot of ignorance to the power of plant-based food and you know how different ingredients different products actually can help they have so much um like vital nutrients and stuff that can counteract all of these like diseases like heart disease and you know diabetes and stuff and it's been proven so many times but there's just so there's a lack of education and there's a lack of um push towards it I guess it's because you can go down like the pharmacy you know they're all companies and stuff and at the end of the day they've got to make money so yeah, they can't really make that much money out of selling us vegetables, but no. they can make billions out of selling us all these pills. Yeah, um, the the poll found that uh, people following a vegan diet relied on pills fifty eight percent less, which is quite significant, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, and that was they they had vegetarians in the group as well, but it was definitely the vegans that came out on top. Yeah. Um, so yeah okay so our questions for this week first question we had was from a lady who's a 51 year old and uh, she thinks she's perimenopausal Um, she says she has no real symptoms which she puts down to eating the rainbow again veg amazing (laughs) and she said her mum and her nan suffered really badly but she said her hair's become really fine and fluffy over the last few years um, so she was just wondering what we would recommend. Um, she takes a B100 complex. Um, and she, like she said, she eats a ton of plants, at least 55 a week. Wow, that's amazing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot shame. more than me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, she was just wondering um, if she's doing enough. So we have Rohini Bajakal, who's a nutritionist at Plant Based Health Professionals, to answer that for us. Hi there. My name is Rohini Bajako and I'm a nutritionist and the communications lead at Plant-Based Health Professionals UK, a membership-led organisation of health professionals, as well as those who are passionate about the benefits of a healthy plant-based diet. Firstly, thank you so much for your question. Female pattern hair loss is often multifactorial and requires quite a considered approach. The average age of the menopause is around 51 around the world, And in the months or years leading up to this, known as the perimenopause, some women or those assigned female at birth notice a change in hair pattern or volume. I do want to reiterate that hair loss is common as we get older and affects all genders. It's not often diet related and the most common cause is actually hereditary, known as androgenetic alopecia. It sounds like you're getting a a great variety of plants in, 55 different ones a week is quite an achievement. I would definitely also recommend focusing on getting at least three to four servings of good sources of plant protein, which is especially important as we get older, such as beans, lentils, peas, soya, nuts and seeds, as it's estimated that 80 to 85 percent of your hair is composed of a protein called keratin. Dietary protein is the building block for hair. Everyone on a plant-based diet should be supplementing with vitamin B12 and certainly vitamin D if you live in the UK, but most supplements promising luscious locks in all the supplement stores don't really have evidence behind them, so please be wary of those. I would recommend focusing on iron-rich foods and zinc-rich foods too, such as dark leafy greens like kale, nuts and seeds and lentils, and always combine iron-rich foods with vitamin C-rich foods at the same time for better iron absorption. 
So pairing kale with red peppers, berries with porridge and lentils with fresh lemon juice. Ultimately, while nutrition can play a role in overall hair health, I definitely recommend seeing a specialist if you're concerned about sudden hair loss, as they can help diagnose what the underlying issues might may be. Check your thyroid, for example, and do a full blood panel. Also have a look at other lifestyle habits such as stress, whether you tie your hair back very tightly, hair products, and so on. Best of luck. Well, that's brilliant advice and definitely something I'll be trying. I mean, I'm 42, but a lot of my friends, well, I'm nearly 43, but shh. Um, <laughs> a lot of my friends are kind of um, perimenopausal. So I feel like it's on the horizon for me. On the way. Um, the second question, well, it wasn't really a question, but it's Stephen the vegan. He's back. <laughs> <laughs> we should get him on the show. I feel like he needs to be on the show. Do you know what? I was thinking that too, but we might regret that, Molly. <laughs> He's going to take my job. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Uh, Well, he was just saying that um, last week we did recipe of the week and he absolutely loved it. In fact, he gave us like six thank yous for doing his idea. Uh, You're very welcome, Stephen the Vegan. We love to hear from you and appreciate all your feedback. Um, (laughs) So he had a recipe for us, which is from the How Not to Die cookbook by Michael Greger, uh, the legend that is Dr. Michael Gregor, as he says. Um, have you got Have you got this cookbook? I've not seen it. You know, I've not I've not read it. Seen I haven't it, got it. it. No, I haven't got it. But I've got the How Not to Die book. Book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've not seen is, the cookbook. No, but the How How Not to Die is just so brilliant. I love it. It's just you can look up anything. Like yeah you know heart disease cancer like any asthma literally any ailment you can think of and it will have all these studies that point to a plant-based diet as being the answer and kind of what foods you should be eating and stuff so I just find it incredible it just goes back to that study that we were just saying about exactly plants are the answer plants are the answer um so here's Stephen's recipe it's called nutty palm um so it's kind of like um cashew I'd call it cashew parmesan because I make this Mm. with cashew nuts Um, so he says he uses it on pasta soups stews curries and salad for like a little cheesy flavor Um, 300 grams of nuts of your choice like I said I use cashews for this and I soak them first just so they're more easily digested Um, Mm. 60 grams of nutritional yeast or yeast flakes eight grams of onion powder eight grams of garlic powder Blimmin' love garlic powder. I put it in everything. I'm definitely not weighing out these seasonings. I just go in and just yeah. put too much in. But definitely. anyway, carry on. <laughs> Chuck it all in <laughs> and hope it's right. Um, and then a pinch <laughs> of salt. And then you literally stick it in the food processor. Oh, wow. Um, and then I keep it in like a little, um, what are they called? Kiln the jar. So it's yeah. like sealed. Airtight. Yeah. And then kind of yeah get it out and sprinkle it on stuff it's um <laughs> that's a great recipe idea thank you Stephen definitely well if you'd like to share a recipe with our listeners and fellow vegans you can email us at simply vegan at anthem.co.uk um I think that's a really nice um little way to end each episode don't you Have yeah a little definitely recipe. definitely um it's always nice to share recipes I think I, I um always like lend cookbooks to friends and stuff mm. Well, that brings us to the end of part one for this week. In part two, which is live on Thursday morning, I'll be speaking to Ella Mega, uh, otherwise known as Sexy Fit Vegan. And boy, she really is sexy and fit. I mean, the abs abs on her. If you check out her website or her Instagram. Oh, God. (laughs) They (laughs) They are rock solid. Um, I like, yeah, I did ask her for some tips, but I think it's just basically do an awful lot more exercise, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> basically quit my job and just do exercise all day. Uh, long. I know it's the dream, isn't it? But yeah, I'm excited yeah. to hear what she says. Yeah, she's um, yeah, brilliant, really inspiring woman, actually. So uh, make sure you tune back in on Thursday. And in the meantime, you can visit the Vegan Food and Living website. And also don't forget to leave us a review on your platform of choice. 